To demonstrate how Ansible works, we used it in a particular case to manage a set of hosts in our infrastructure. The infrastructure consists eight hosts which need to be managed, defined in two main groups, clients, servers, and master node Gerta, which is the Ansible master that runs Ansible commands and playbooks used to configure the hosts. There are four hosts part of the client group, two of them Ubuntu and two others Debian, while the server group contains an Ubuntu DHCP server and two Debian web servers. After setting the infrastructure, we define the stable state for each host. In the table shown, you can see the main policies our host must comply with. Since Ansible works on top of SSH, we want to be sure that all of our hosts have the latest version of SSH installed. To achieve first policy, we wrote a playbook which ensures that OpenSSH is installed the latest version in all of our hosts. Now we will execute this playbook on Blerta and see the results. As we can see, first the playbook is gathering facts, which is the process of gathering metadata from hosts, like date, host name, IP addresses, etc., which we can use later in our playbooks. Then it continues to execute its tasks. As we can see, OpenSSH was already installed, the latest version in all of our hosts. Besides configuring our hosts, we also need to install different packages on them. To achieve this, we used App Package Manager. Since App downloads the packages from one of the repositories defined in the sources.list file, we have to make sure that this file is updated in every host. We need two web sources.list generators to create two different sources.list files, one for Debian hosts and one for Ubuntu hosts. This list were stored in our master node and will be pushed in our host depending on their operating system. The Debian list on the Debian hosts, while the Ubuntu list in Ubuntu hosts, using the copy module of Ansible. If the file is copied successfully, the handler apt update is triggered. The handler forces the host to update package list by executing apt get update command. Now we will execute this playbook on Blerta and see the results. As we can see, one Debian host Drilone and two Ubuntu hosts Artriti and Learty were affected and the specific tasks were executed on them. Another task of system administrators is to keep the time synchronized in all the hosts. One of the simplest way to achieve such task is using NTP servers. So we first installed NTP in all our hosts. Then we copied the configuration file from the master to each host to make sure that all of them have the same configuration file and are synchronized to the same NTP servers. Whenever the NTP is installed or the configuration file is changed, the NTP service is restarted, so the changes are implemented immediately. Since the time zone can be manually changed by the users, we will ensure that these changes will be overwritten, setting back the correct time zone. If there have been changes, the corn service will be restarted using the corn handler. Now we will execute this playbook on Blerta and see the results. As we can see, on Lisi, NTP package was installed. Also on Lisi and Adone, the NTP was configured and on Petriti, the time zone was configured. All the other hosts were correctly configured and no change were made on them. We managed to install packages on the clients and servers almost the same way using the app module. Since there is more than one package to be installed at once, we use the standard loop to install all the packages given in the list with item. Using the item variable, we could loop through all the listed packages. Now we will execute this playbook on Blerta and see the results. 
As we can see on Lisa and Petrita, some of the packages were installed and updated. On other hosts, all the packages were installed the latest version. One of key parts of our infrastructure is obviously the HCP server, so we managed to maintain it in a stable state. First, we ensure that our server Liarte has the latest version of ISC DHCP server. After installing it, we also wanted to make sure that it is configured properly. Liarte uses the configuration file taken from the master node using the copy module. Since the HCP server serves all the hosts in our infrastructure, it must always be running. In the end, if there are any changes, we restart the DHCP service so the changes will be enforced and the DHCP server will work properly. Now we will execute this playbook on Blerta and see the results. As we can see, the DHCP service wasn't running and Ansible started it. We have two web servers in our infrastructure. They are named Lisi and Petriti. Lisi is the public web server and the gateway router is configured to forward all incoming requests on port 80 to Lisi. Lisi serves a simple web page to all clients. We have just put the HTML file to Apache default document root var slash www and left Apache's default configuration on Lisi. Our goal is to ensure that this default configuration is not changed and Lisi is serving the right website all the time. Petriti is our web server. It is designed for internal use only. In order to view the content of web page served by Petriti, users must authenticate first. Authentication is done using .ht access and ht passwords file. All other configuration files are left to default and our goal is to ensure that this default configuration is not changed and Petriti will serve the right website and will use authentication all the time. In order to achieve all of these tasks, we wrote a long playbook which does these tasks. Installs and upgrade Apache web server to the latest version using app. Ensure that both web servers use default Apache configuration. If not, copy the default configuration files from Blerta on them. Copy the right websites to host directory root from there they will be served to clients. If these files are edited on servers, they will be replaced with the ones on Blerta by this playbook. Configure authentication on Petriti by copying the HT access and password files Petriti or replacing them if they are different from ones on Blerta. Configure Petriti to use authentication by editing sites enabled slash default file. Ensure that Apache 2 service is started. Finally, if any changes are made to the Apache 2 service is restarted. Now we will execute this playbook on Blerta and see the results. As we can see, the web pages to be served or copied to Petriti and DC, and Petriti is configured to use authentication. Seems the document root of both web servers was empty. Since taking care of user data is the main principle of a skilled system administrator, we decided to provide user data backup for some of our hosts. We wrote a playbook which will back up professor's data every Friday at 5 o'clock. All of our hosts have their default username sysadmin and our playbook will copy the folder home slash sysadmin and all its subfolders and files to Blerta in the directory war backup plus name backup date. This is done using rsense and command module of playbook. We have also created another playbook which will send back files from Blerta to the target host. There we have to specify the extra variables target and date. It will automatically copy backup files to specified date from Blerta and send them to specified target. Now we will execute this playbook on Blerta and see the results. As we can see, Ansible is backing up data from Atriti and Adoni to Blerta. We will now navigate to war slash backups, which is our backup folder, and see that we have two folders 
for two hosts, Atriti and Adoni. Also for Adoni we have two folders of two backups, one on November 3rd and one just now on November 5th. After writing the playbooks described below, we set the cron tab to periodically execute these playbooks on Blerta. All the playbooks are set to be executed every 5 minutes except the backup, which is executed every Friday 5 o'clock. While the send backup is not periodic task and can only be executed manually whenever required. In order to ensure that our playbooks are doing their job correctly, we simulated some common problems in our hosts and drifted them from stable state and waited for Ansible to put them back to stable state. We manually deleted sources.list file on DC and we made sure that sources.list doesn't exist anymore. Then, after 5 minutes, check that Ansible has copied the new sources.list from Blirta to DC. We change time and time zone. Stopped NTP service and deleted NTP servers from the NTP configuration file. After 5 minutes, check that Ansible has changed back the time zone to CET, added the configuration file, started NTP, and the time is set to the synchronized time with NTP server. We removed that map from DC. And after 5 minutes, check that it was again installed by Ansible. This was done because Nmap is one of the packages listed to be installed in the servers using installed servers.yml. And installed servers is scheduled to run every 5 minutes. We managed to stop the ISC DHCP server service in Leorti, deleted all ISC DHCP server configuration files, And after 5 minutes check that DHCP is running and it's configured properly in Leorti because Ansible has installed the ISC DHCP server and copied the correct configuration file and started DHCP service. We removed HD access file on Petriti so the web page served by it could be viewed without password. After 5 minutes we see that we cannot view the web page without the proper credentials since the HD access file have been copied from Blerta to Petriti. We also messed things up in the other web server, making Lisi serve different web page from one defined first. But after 5 minutes, Lisi was serving the correct web page since index.html page has been copied from Blerta to Lisi. Furthermore, we removed Apache web server from Lisi. Also removed all configuration files, document root and everything left from Apache. After 5 minutes it was again serving the correct web page because Ansible has installed Apache on Lisi, 
copied the website from Blerta to document root and started the Apache service. We simulated another advanced case. We suppose that two of our hosts, Lisi and Artliti, are gone, and we have no access to them. So we started two new computers and performed a clean install on Debian 7.2 server on host 1 and Ubuntu 12.04 on host 2. After the computer started, we performed these tasks. On host 1, we just told to the host that you are Lisi by editing its host name to Lisi. This could also be done during operation system install, but we had forgotten to do that. Installed OpenSSH and restarted our new host Lisi. Meanwhile, we told our DHCP server that the MAC address of our new Lisi so it will give the reserved IP to our new Lisi instead of the old one. This was done by editing the DHCP configuration file on Blerta and Ansible did the rest of the job by copying this configuration file to Learty and restarting the DHCP service. Last step was left on Blerta, we reset the SSH keys for communicating with Lisi. After completing three steps, Ansible did the rest part of the job. Installed Apache on host 1, new Lisi, configured Apache and copied the web page on host 1, document root, started Apache service, so host 1 started serving the web page for clients. All this was done in less than three minutes after operation system installed. On host 2, we run the same commands as on host 1. But since R3T is in the professor group, we back up data of host in this group, so we performed an additional task on host 2, sending back to R3T the latest backup data. The latest two simulated problems show how fast and easy we can configure new hosts that join our infrastructure using Ansible.